Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to talk about the um, uh, exchange for uh, ERC20 tokens, which are obviously tokens on Ethereum that uh, we developed at Gnosis. So uh, we call it the uh, Gnosis Dutch Exchange, and uh, it's a decentralized exchange for uh, Ethereum tokens using the Dutch auction mechanism to uh, determine a fair value of tokens, and I'll explain what that means in a second. So uh, first of all, a small disclaimer, I did not make this presentation. I uh, kind of read through it, and I'm pretty sure that uh, I understand everything. Um, <laughs> so, so I do understand everything on the technical side and, um, and the finance stuff. Uh, it shouldn't be uh, very difficult. So um, let's start with an a introduction of the uh, of a traditional um, exchange that uses an order book and a continuous auction uh, or, or a continuous exchange. So um, you can either do limit orders uh, whereby they get placed on an order book. Um, they can either be bids, uh, which means um, that you will uh, buy it at a specific price, or they can be asks, which means that you will sell it at a specific price, right? And um, you have uh, the spread, which is the difference between the bid and the ask, and you can also do market orders, um, which are like uh, basically limit orders with the, um, with the value being the current lowest or highest value respectively so that uh, the order is immediately executed, right? Um, yeah, so a market order is, as a result, immediately executed. Um, and you have, uh, so, so that's why it's called a continuous exchange, is there is a serial processing of orders uh, one by one. And also, like, on a different note, um, I think uh, could be also termed a continuous exchange uh, because the order can be fulfilled as soon as it comes through, right? So, uh, yeah. And orders matched using uh, pay as bid, <laughs> actually, um, yeah, so that's, that's that. Um, <laughs> so, the, um, so, so, okay, so, so the problem we see with that is, uh, is manifold. Um, there is, uh, yeah, so, so the biggest problem of all is the possibility to front run. Um, and that means, um, so, okay, so if, for example, if you have a centralized exchange, then if you uh, submit an order, then uh, the exchange knows about this order before um, it uh, broadcasts it, right? So it can actually act on that order, um, act on the information um, before it broadcasts it. So it, it gives it an unfair advantage. Um, and in the case of decentralized exchanges like other ones than, uh, than ours, a lot of them use uh, a centralized order book. So that still means that the exchange, like even theoretically, has the possibility to act on the order uh, before it fulfills it, right? So um, that's a problem. With, with our exchange, it's fully decentralized, so it's fully on-chain. So uh, we don't, nobody has any more information than uh, than um, other people. Yeah, um, anyways. So, um, other disadvantages of order books include like, you have, you can have a high spread for like illiquid auctions, so they're not, they're not ideal for those either. Um, and, like for example, if you have a, if you have a illiquid uh, pair, then um, if the size of the order book on like either side is not that large, then if you make an order, it's, it can push the price, right? So you, you will actually get uh, uh, a different price for, for every part of the order. Um, yeah, that's basically that. Um, so, like, I, I guess it can be summarized by the, by the paragraph that, uh, or, or by the statement that uh, applying a, a continuous uh, mechanism to the blockchain doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, in the blockchain there's a discrete time, obviously, and um, yeah, that creates um, all of these problems. Cool. 
So um, instead, what we decided to go for is something more uh, appropriate for the blockchain, which is a batch auction system. And in particular, um, we, uh, we basically collect all the orders at once and then we auction them off all at once, right? So we, we batch many orders together and we, and we sell them all at once. Does that make sense? Cool. So um, in particular, we use a, a, a mechanism of the Dutch auction, which is like kind of the opposite of an English auction. So in an English auction, uh, that's, that's the regular auction, people uh, bid and every bid has to have a higher price than the previous one, right? For, the, uh, for it to make any sense. So in a Dutch auction, it's the exact opposite. The price is like falling and the first person to like take that price wins the, the, the thing. So that's like if you're auctioning off one item, for our purposes, we have to like auction off, you know, tokens. So it's, it's uh, many, many, many. And, um, and hence we adapted it for it to be uh, usable for um, many, uh, not, not just one, one thing at a time. And in particular, the way that works is, I think there's a graph even that, that explains it the best. Um, yeah. So on the uh, x-axis, you can, you can view time. And on the y-axis, you can view the value. Right, so we start off with a constant like sell volume, so a constant amount of tokens to be sold, and um, and uh, we always multiplied by the price to get its value, right? So uh, yeah, so as a result, um, okay. <laughs> So, so we have, we have, uh, we have two, two expressions, right? We have the, the sell volume and we have the price. And what's, what's crucial in, 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 in this is that uh, the price is uh, decreasing. And if you have a constant sell volume and you have a decreasing price, then the value would be decreasing as well, right? So that's what we can see in the graph. Um, can you guys see it? Um, it's it's the, the line in red. Um, is, it, is it visible somewhat? Okay. So... The, the line in red is the, like, the value of the cell volume. Um, and then what you have underneath is the uh, kind of like the buy volume, right? So, um, right, right, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So um, the, the price is, is like the, the, uh, the cell volume in terms of the buy volume. So it, it's kind of like a conversion price between the two tokens, right? So as it's decreasing, um, the value of the sell volume is decreasing, and then you have the, the blue thingy, which is the uh, buy volume, and that's increasing, and at some point it will, uh, it will match, right? So uh, a necessary um, and sufficient condition for that is that there's at least one uh, buy order, and as long as there's at least one buy order, then, you know, at some point, uh, in the worst case, in a really long time, those will intersect. Um, in fact, even if there isn't any buy order, they will intersect because the way our price function works is that it actually reaches zero after 24 hours. Um, does that make sense? So basically, um, they will intersect at some point always, and that's when we close the auction. What happens then? Um, the Bidders, or in other words, the buyers, they can claim the uh, tokens that are being auctioned off, and the sellers, they can claim the tokens that the buyers uh, sent as well. So, yeah, does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Um, so, let's see. Uh, right, so what's, what's actually very crucial here is that the, the price is the same for all the uh, bidders, right? Um, so, it actually it doesn't matter if you participated, let me show you the graph again, um, like at the very beginning or at the very end, say, um, the buy volume is always increasing and when they intersect, all the bidders get that price. Okay, so, so everybody gets the same price at the end. Um, okay. Right, right, so, so actually this is a very good, <laughs> this is a very good uh, illustration for 
um, for understanding how it works. So you have, uh, you have a two by two diagram and you have, uh, so prior to the auction, the sellers, they deposit the tokens and uh, then the auction starts and then the bidders uh, bid for them, right? So that's, that's a very good summary of, of kind of the, the mechanism that I explained. Great. So, uh, yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna say it. So also notice that there's uh, two possibilities. The, um, uh, the, the buyer side can either intersect the seller side like buy with a buy order if it goes up or it can intersect it uh, by the seller side going like for a long time and intersecting it from the top down, right? So basically there's like uh, two possibilities, either a buy order can clear the auction or it can be cleared what we say like with time. Um, so yeah, that's that. Okay, so, um, right, so the way it works is we have uh, like, for example, Ether and uh, token A, and you can, you, there's always two symmetric auctions running at the same time. So there's gonna be one where Ether is being the sell token, and the token A is being like the token that's uh, bidded, and you have the uh, opposite uh, symmetric one where it's token A that's being the sell one and, and Ether is being bidded. So we always run these uh, symmetric auctions and uh, they always start at the same time. And uh, when the second one closes of the symmetric pair, then after 10 minutes, we initiate the, the next pair. So that's kind of how the mechanism works. And there's, okay, there, there's, there's a condition, which is that the next uh, uh, auction pair um, received a combined value of at least $1,000 worth of sell volume. Um, so that could have, uh, or, or sorry, it's not combined, it's like an or. So either auction must have received at least $1,000 worth of uh, sell volume. And um, I guess I haven't explained the, the price function, so kind of hinted to it. Um, so the way the price function works is we always start at two times the closing price of the last auctions, and, um, and it decreases. And after six hours, it reaches the uh, past closing price, the previous closing price, right? And then um, after 24 hours, it reaches uh, zero. So I don't know, maybe it's better if I just really simply. So we have, uh, it starts at like two times the previous closing price. And then after uh, uh, maybe something like, something like this. So it's a, it's a reciprocal function uh, like that. Cool. Right. So yeah, I mean, this is this diagram just summarizes what I explained, except for uh, for, for multiple uh, auctions for for multiple uh, uh, things uh, after one another in in sequence. Cool. So now I'm going to get into like. The uh, more interesting stuff, apart from like the basic mechanism. So um, you don't need any tokens, obviously, to participate in the exchange. And in particular, uh, Gnosis tokens are not required. And um, so in, at Gnosis, we have this thing where like you stake uh, Gnosis tokens and they generate these things called OWL tokens. And then those are used to pay fees. So the OWL tokens, you do not need them to participate in the exchange. But if you have them, then um, like it's worth it to use them, basically. So then we have a token which is uh, intrinsic to the um, Dutch exchange, and that's uh, what we call a, a, a Magnolia token. And um, it is used to decrease uh, your fees. So there are fees in the exchange, and um, they... Uh, <laughs> let me just... I remember there was a slide. Yep. So there's 0.5% for both the seller side and the buyer side, but they do not go to us. So it's a fully decentralized platform. The fees, they, they are put back into the system. Um, however, you can also decide to spend uh, up to half of your fee in like the equivalent amount of like OWL tokens. Does that make sense? I think so. <laughs> 
So that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, and how do you actually get the Magnolia tokens for every uh, Ether uh, worth of tokens that you traded on the exchange? You're going to get one uh, Magnolia token. Um, so it's like a constantly inflating uh, supply of, uh, of tokens based on how much uh, value was traded on the exchange. And there is a specific uh, function that determines the transaction fee that you have to pay. So when I say pay, if you also participate in the next auction, you will very likely get some of it back because it does, uh, it, since it goes back into the ecosystem in particular, it always goes to the next auction. So that's kind of a way to incentivize uh, people to uh, participate in um, succeeding auctions. And yeah, the graph is a, is a you can see it uh, on the uh, thing, uh, hopefully. Um, it's a step function and it's, it's kind of very like uh, social, I would say, because it, it uh, works in like a log 10 manner. Um, so yeah, as long as you have, what is this? 0.001%, so I guess that would be one, uh, uh, that, that would be like 100,000th of, of all the uh, Magnolia tokens in supply, then your fee is reduced to 0.4%. It does say uh, Tulip, so th there's been a rename, and uh, now they're called Magnolia. Cool. So I'm just going to quickly uh, finish off by, yeah, summarizing. So what are the... Uh, multiple advantages. Um, so there's, 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 since it's, everything is on-chain, there's uh, no front-running by any party apart from like, uh, I mean, this is with respect to the underlying uh, technology that we're using, which is Ethereum. So Ethereum itself might have um, front-running issues and we can't deal, with, we can't do anything about that, but it doesn't introduce any new ones because there's no uh, centralization involved at all. Um, Right, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like uh, kind of a summary of what I said. Um, so we think this, this also will like make it easier to determine a fair price because it's an auction mechanism and auctions are, are, are very well known to uh, be very good at determining uh, prices of uh, goods. So, I mean, this is kind of like financial stuff, but it's, uh, yeah. And uh, a huge advantage, uh, we think we worked very hard on this, is to make it very, like, gas efficient. So, to make it, uh, to, to, yeah, to make it very, very efficient. And, um, yeah, it's, it actually turns out that it's, uh, that, that we did a good job, um, that, that it's uh, very, very efficient. So, um, one, one, like, point to note is that, for example, um, Ether Delta. So, if you or, or other uh, order book exchanges, if you post an order, then um, it's very likely that multiple people will try to fulfill it at the same time. Which, but only one of them, or, or there's a chance that only one of them will be able to fulfill it. Obviously, it can be partially fulfilled, but um, there is a chance that some of the orders or some of the transactions will not be able to fulfill the order they wanted to, in which case um, there's a lot of gas wastage. Um, so there's even a graph here, um, right here, which shows, I, I'm not sure which exchange this is, but in any case, it shows how many uh, transactions are failing because they're trying to fulfill an order that uh, isn't available anymore. Um, it's four out of like eight or something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, as for the gas cost, so it's, it's pretty good that, for example, sellers, they can, uh, they can choose a really low gas price because it doesn't matter when they, when, when they submit it. Um, and the sa similar thing could be said for the, uh, for the buyers, the, the bidders as well. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, and uh, two more like huge advantages that we see of this model is that it allows smart contracts to uh, use the platform, and the reason for that is that like for example with Ether Delta, 
um, you have to sign um, you have to sign the order and then it's, it goes into like a centralized order book and smart contracts they can't sign stuff because they don't have a private key so in this in this model um, even smart contracts can participate because they just have to uh, call a function of, of, of our exchange um, so so we think that's that's really powerful and it kind of like changes the concept of an exchange it doesn't have to be just an exchange it can be a platform where uh, like you know uh, s some contract might want to sell uh, or exchange uh, tokens so they can uh, do that using this as well it means you can pay in one token and the person can get paid in another token um, if it is uh, in the like in the process uh, exchanged on the Dutch exchange um, and uh, last of all there's a there's a on-chain uh, price oracle that which is actually one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why, why we developed this is like to have a reliable uh, on-chain price oracle for all the tokens because with uh, order books you can always like sequence the transaction so that you um, post a really, for example, uh, high limit order and, um, and, then, and then you fulfill it immediately yourself, which means that you will like for, for a very short time, you will change the market price of the token, and if you sequence your transactions in the right way, then you can take advantage of that um, for your gain, um, which means that the price oracle isn't, isn't reliable. Um, well, in this case, you know, yeah, you can do the thinking yourself, there's, there's no way to do that. And yeah, so we have a, uh, <laughs> we have a front end as well. Um, so it it's, looks quite, uh, quite slick. Um, so you choose, yeah. I think it's it's pretty straightforward, uh, self-explanatory, and you can use MetaMask or uh, Gnosis Safe in the future, um, and you submit your order, and you can see the status. Yep. And uh, let's see. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, potential audiences for this right now. Where we're, uh, we're actively looking for market makers, which are you know, professional traders. So if anybody is into that business then, uh, and you feel like you want to trade uh, on this exchange, please get in touch. Um, so yeah, um, and last thing I'm going to kind of, uh, uh, kind of an offer. So um, we developed this exchange. We're also doing many other projects at Gnosis. One of the other ones we're doing is Gnosis X which is uh, a competition for you to uh, think and develop of uh, prediction market uh, use cases. And um, yeah, so there's uh, currently three categories and they all have a deadline in like August and September. And if you feel like you fit one of the categories, I don't, uh, yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, um, if you, you, you can, you can, uh, you, you can, you can access um, the information about the Gnosis X, which you can find, for example, on Medium, and you can find the categories there. And if you feel like you you uh, have an idea for one of the categories, you can um, apply, and you can win up to hundred thousand uh, dollars worth of uh, GNO tokens and uh, and um, support with developing the application. So that's uh, kind of an offer that I wanted to make. And uh, with that, so yeah, NOSX ID8, that's kind of the, the logo. And oh, <laughs> okay, so um, the, the three categories are um, science and R&D, um, token diligence and blockchain project integration. Uh, and we have, a, we have an SDK that, that will allow you to, uh, to do that in a better way. Cool. And um, yeah, you, 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 you can use this email address to get more information. Um, anyways, great. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, I, that's exactly what I'm here for. <laughs> Please yep. use the, the mic this time when you have questions because it's much better finally for the live stream. Yeah. Ooh. 
Thank you. Yeah. Um, how do you get liquidity into the market? Um, so you post the sell order. Well, okay. So uh, the question is, how do you get liquidity into the market? And the answer is very simple. Um, you post the sell order. That's that. Um, so the sell order will include the information of which auction you want to participate in um, and how many tokens. And that's it. You can either participate using the front end. Um, in which actually right now, or, or in the first version, there will only be a sell side front end. So when you're participating through this, you will always be selling. It's very, very simple. And in the future, uh, you will also have a possibility to use a graphic user interface for the, the buyer side. And um, yeah, or you can just use the smart contract directly. Does that answer the question? Cool. <coughs> Yes, so the security audit should end next week, I believe, and uh, it's deployed on test network, um, on uh, Coven, uh, but mainly on Rinkeby. Um, and it should be live, I guess, within a, a month or a month and a half uh, on mainnet. Yeah. Yeah, anyone? Yeah, uh, so uh, recently there's uh, been a, a, quite a few uh, pri price uh, fluctuation or large influences of people selling off in large amounts, influencing markets. If you're selling in batches, wouldn't there be a high risk of that? Um, would there be a so uh, would there be a higher risk of what? What, what what's the question? Um, so higher volatility. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't see why. Um. So, for example, if there was um, so stock involved, if right? You, if you did that, right? And uh, yeah, markets would be quite affected of uh, like of, of the. If I'm right in saying you have like a batch mechanism which shoots up, so there yeah, aren't any, yeah, yeah. So, in fact, I think it, uh, the opposite is true. So, the reason is that um, let's say you have an order book. I guess I'll just use a diagram. It's the easiest. So you have like order book and it looks, I don't know, something like, like, uh, like, like this, whatever, right? And so um, suddenly when you start selling a lot, then like this stuff like always will move to the right, right? And it could like move very fast. Um, you, know, you know, if this is very steep, then it will move very fast and the price will change a lot, right? Well, um, here, if you sell a lot, then it will not necessarily change the market price. Do, do, you, do you see that? So if you sell a lot in an order book, it will necessarily change the market price. But if you sell a lot in a, in a batch uh, auction system, it will not necessarily change the market price because you would just have a larger sell volume. This X will just be a much larger number. And, uh, but there can still be sufficiently many uh, buy volume so that the market price in theory could stay the same. Cool. Yep. Okay, so I have two questions. The first one is probably the most important is uh, why you decided to rename from Tulip to Magnolia? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, Tulip yeah. was much better, sorry. <laughs> um, the and second one is just uh, out of interest, how do you, uh, uh, how do you uh, model these things? Um, uh, or do you model these things economically? Like how do you basically form an opinion of whether this uh, model, what, what effect this will have on a bigger scale if it becomes very popular? Uh, okay, so yeah, I'm going to start with the first question. I mean, uh, I, 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 I don't know, like, uh, I, I guess the reason was that um, Tulip, it kind of has a connotation of like the, <laughs> the uh, a, a bubble and, and we didn't want that. Um, the second question uh, was, uh, how do you model this economically? What effect would this have on the uh, financial system if this takes off and like if this model becomes like really, really prevalent? Um, um, well, I think it will have huge advantages, right? Um, uh, one, one of them we just discussed. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah, you, you can just say uh, at the comparison, the, the disadvantages versus, uh, or, or the advantages, they will be multiplied, right, if this is uh, much more prevalent. Um, so yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, my question is, if I understand the Dutch auction model correctly, you choose this to reduce uh, on-chain events um, and also to have, avoid this uh, concurrent transactions and waste of gas. Right. Um, have you ever studied the possibility to use a Lightning or Raiden and completely go off-chain and do the um, a matching engine off-chain and only when people go in and go out, they sign on-chain? Um, so, uh, in this version, um, it, we did not use uh, Raiden, but um, it is something that we are looking into. Um, so, yeah. This, this does have the, the, the advantage of, of even further reducing uh, uh, gas fees, doesn't it? Um, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, it would maybe totally even uh, eliminate those, and uh, it would allow a traditional exchange. I think 99% of the users know traditional exchanges much more, mm. so maybe they are more used to the conventional order books, so yeah. I see a small risk for you that uh, uh, mainstream adoption will be hindered by this new kind of... Uh, Mechanism. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I mean, so, so it's you know it's a new model, and 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 we'll see if it takes off. We we believe in it. We think that there's uh, that there's huge advantages, and that it's uh, more suited for like for uh, blockchain than, than the traditional. But um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, the market has to decide on that. Um, yeah. That's that. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah, one more question by gentleman in the third row. Um, as an auction maker, as mm. I understand, if I want to sell, I don't know, my 100 ETH or what, um, can I set the properties of the auction, like for example the time, no. And so that's, that's fixed. And things like that. That's fixed. Yeah. That's so, always 24 hours. That's right. Yeah. So in order to like uh, aggregate all the liquidity, um, we don't uh, divide it by like having everybody start their own auction. Um, everybody just all they do is they post the sell order, and we aggregate all the liquidity, and we have a uniform rules of the game that uh, that all the liquidity follows. Cool. One more question over there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, totally. So um, there, there will. Uh, I mean, th th there, there is, there is a possibility for arbitrage, right? So, in particular, if the uh, price ever goes below the market price in other exchanges, then the auction will be closed um, because all the bidders will buy up that. Uh, uh, at that price because they can get it at a lower price than at other uh, exchanges. So that means that the sellers will actually never uh, get a worse price than the market price at that point after the six hours. So yeah, I mean, as a buyer or as a seller, you can decide which exchange you want to use, whether this one or a different one. So inherently, there's always going to be arbitrage between the exchanges which is good because as a, as a trader, you should get the same price on all the exchanges and arbitrage uh, works to uh, achieve that. Yeah. Um, not really. So, I mean, like here, it doesn't matter what the market price is. Like the world could be burning over here and like that doesn't matter, right? But like what matters is like once we get close to the, to the, to the closing, I mean, uh, unless the, so, so it's, there's like two mechanisms going on, right? There's time going on and there's uh, price. So as soon as the price reaches the uh, market price, right, that's when, and, and that's very likely to happen after, uh, oops, I think I, after, after six hours uh, rather than uh, sooner than that. Yeah. Does that make sense or? or? Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll take one. 
Yeah, so, so basically like what I was trying to say is that um, the only time arbitrage can happen is at the closing point, um, which obviously that, that varies where that is, but as soon as the price drops to the market price uh, elsewhere is when arbitrage happens. Uh, before that, it can happen because, uh, yeah, I mean, the bidders would just go uh, buy it somewhere else. Yeah. You said basically the price of the option is, the starting price is double the, 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 end, the closing price of the previous one. Yeah, that's right. So the starting price of, the, of this auction mm. is uh, double of the closing price of the previous one. What if that's already below market price? What if that's what? Already below market price. Um, so that... That would maybe mean that the auction closes instantly or what? Uh, so, okay, I'm gonna see two things. So yes, like in, in theory, yes. So if, if X is still is uh, smaller than or equal to, uh, the market price at this point, then yeah, it will close instantly. Um, and the second thing is it can't happen like from an economic point of view because um, previously if, like as kind of my answer to the previous question, if the price had gone below the market price in the previous auction, then the uh, economy, the traders would close it uh, then. So prices will never go below their market price because otherwise uh, bidders are incentivized to um, actually uh, bid uh, and, and buy them up, right? So, or, or are you saying like the, the time difference will make the... The, the price will change between the two options? Right, okay, that's a very good point. So there's actually only 10 minutes um, usually between the two auctions. So that is, uh, it, it's, it's, it's very unlikely that the price doubles or halves in 10 minutes. What do you think? <laughs> That's a very good question. So the reason we, we put the 10 minutes there is like, if you want to be, um, uh, if you want to claim the tokens like here, right? And then you want to participate in the next auction immediately. So then we, we have time where you can like claim them and you can also sell them uh, in the next auction immediately. Yeah, yes. Um, are the sellers like exposed to some kind of like volatility risk because they kind of lock their tokens up in this auction mechanism? If the price moves a lot up or down, then that could kind of be undesirable for them to have. So they might want to not sell them anymore. Yes, I mean uh, obviously. So there are many many uh, advantages to this model. Uh, one of the uh, possible disadvantages um, is so let me start with the bidders. So. The, the bidders or the buyers, they actually are like really well off, right? Because they, they uh, come in like at the last whatever and they get the tokens very, very soon. So very, very uh, uh, low lag and low volatility risk. Um, the sellers, on the other hand, you are right. They, they will get their, uh, the, the tokens on average in six hours. So yeah, that's that, that we are aware of that. Like that is uh, uh, one of the disadvantages. Why should the sellers participate? Um, so it's like, it's, it's all the other, it's, it's all the things together, right? So, um, you have, you have a, a, a smaller chance for, uh, for the exchange to front run. So basically this, this mechanism allows, um, you to get the fair value of the tokens because, um, there's no trust needed. The miners, yeah. So there's no trust with respect to the protocol. Any other questions? Other questions? No more questions? Cool. So thank you very much, Dominic. Thank you. Thank you very much all for this great evening. Thank you very much the live peer team. Thanks. Many thanks to the Navarra team. Many thanks to all our helpers for organizing this event. Um, next month there'll be another meetup, of course. It will be more aimed for beginners, so a lower technical level. Um, I hope to see you next month. Thank you.